To the command stations. Battle stations. Battle stations. Battle stations. We got the Spitfire rocking. Alex Davis. Sergeant Sclafani reporting in, sir. Gunner Sergeant <laughs> Alex Sclafani. Yeah, Manning the guns uh -oh. on the B-17. We're going with a pre-production sample painted by Tom Hunt. Wow, look at that. That's the first time I've seen them. Enemies, yet best of friends. <laughs> He's good now. It's all about Alex. You tell us what you're seeing. Now you're getting it. <laughs> oh! Yeah, you hit. There he is. Three. Go, Tom. Yes! That's it. That's the shot. That's a simple. I'm coming home. All right. <laughs> Sorry. Hey guys, James with Hobby King alongside me, Tom Hunt, behind the camera, Alex, and we're out here finally. If you guys have been following the weekly updates, you would have known about this, the crazy B-17 Flying Fortress that Tom Hunt had rigged up for us, uh, full of FPV transmitter goodness and cameras everywhere. Uh, Tom, it was amazing. We just flew it. A good little while now people have already seen the little promo video we did um, from the footage of the camera and we were using Spitfire 109 and flying a Tom and another B-17 and another B-17 but how is it working exactly how you uh... exactly how I envisioned I have yet to see the video of yes. course yet but uh, um, it, you know what I saw on the goggles while I was flying um, it's just outstanding it really gives you the presence that you're you know you know, you got nine guys behind you telling them, hey, you got to shoot out this window. Hey, you know, bandits at six o'clock, bandits at 10 o'clock high. And, um, you know, flying the formation with the B-17, it's just it's just impressive to be able to do that because it's such majestic airplanes. And yes. with the video that we got, it just, what a great time. Yeah, man, we've been, I mean, we were dying to get out here and do this. And what we used, obviously, we used our Mark 1A Spitfire here. And then Tom had a pre-production sample That's correct. of the BF-109 that, because he does a lot of the testing with Durafly with Stuart there, and he painted that one up himself, and Stuart gave us the okay to use it, even though he doesn't, doesn't usually show these things, but he loves that model so much. Uh, so they worked out flawlessly. We flew a ton. Oh, it took a lot of flights to get the shots we needed. Alex behind the camera was our gunner, and you'll see a little bit of that. It was great. But now that that's all done, what we're just gonna do now, a little fun, the three of us, uh, Tom, me, and Alex behind the camera, we're gonna run the gunner. B-17 and I'm gonna fly the green B-17 behind and we're just gonna do a little formation just so again you guys see how awesome it is to work and 
really, if you take your time in this hobby, you could accomplish almost anything. That's you know? right. You could make anything happen with a little patience. And you proved it with this thing. It's beautiful. This is great. I, I'm looking forward to doing more as uh, the weather gets better and it's, it's much more pleasant to be out here. Yeah. All right, let's uh, take it up. Let's All right, we ready to go? Everybody set up? Yep. Sergeant Stefani reporting in. I'm okay. watching you. Go get him, Tom. There you half are. Throttle, maybe a little higher than half. I'm right behind you. Okay. Now, guys, I'm, right. I'm flying from the Conix on the green B-17, yeah. just so I didn't interfere on any of Tom's signals while we're doing this, and so I could stay in somewhat of formation. So, Alex, you're on the gunners. Yep. I am at your 6 o'clock. Yep, I'm on the uh, bottom gunner right now. You're shooting me down. I see you, yep. We need BBs. Okay, left-hand turn. We got a perfect English weather day. Feels like World War II. In April. In Actually, in, in, June. In, in June. <laughs> in June. 40 <laughs> degrees. Uh, I'm going to pass underneath you a little bit. If you okay. want to drop to. Tracking. There we go. I'm speeding up. I am now at full throttle. I'm going right a little oh, bit. Oh, yeah. And I'm making a. All right, you're just way. out of my shot. Oh, I still see you. Making Whoa. a right turn. That was cool. Where are you now? Oh, you're way up there. I'm throttling back. All right, I'm gonna come up over you guys for this little pass. Switching. Alex, switch gunners. Yep. I'm right above you. I should be. Yeah, you just were. I'm, I'm starting to right. make. You're making a right. Right hand turn. All right. A slow right. I'm going north, turning north. I'm over the tree line. Yeah, that's you. All right, I'm coming to catch up. All right. Alex, coming on your three o'clock. I see you. I see you. Five o'clock. Oh, I'm over the scrub trees. Turning, turning to the east. You're right below us, James. I'm going to head right to the pump house, that little house out in the yep, middle. Yeah, I'm headed towards it too. All right. I'm at half throttle. There you go. So if I Alex, got you. you see me? Yeah, now let me follow you for a little bit. Let's see if Alex sees me. No, I don't see you. Where should you be? I'm heading over right, to the scrub I'm trees. I'm behind you. On your, coming on your 3 o'clock, Alex. There he is. Or your 5 o'clock. 6 yeah. o'clock. Straight behind is 6. 12 I didn't, know which, I didn't know which way you were facing. I thought you were going the other way. There we go. I'm right. Okay. Behind I'm heading me. straight towards the pump house. Yeah, I'm gonna go up. There we go, I see you a Very little. Very nice, yep, looks good. Wow, formation flying, there it is. Losing signal a little bit. Turn. Okay, coming I'm back. right behind you still. 30 seconds. I'm on your yep. seven, eight o'clock. All right. I'm gonna drop down like a uh, high-speed pass coming from the west. Okay. I'm gonna come make a left-hand turn now, yep. and I'm gonna drop right on down. Here we go. Perfect. Oh man, I haven't got a whole lot of power left in this thing. I'm gonna have to land. All right. Gear down. All right, I'm gonna circle around the back side of the Hobby King and come in from that corner and land into the wind northeast like we did before. I'm flying line of sight, so I'm gonna go land at line of sight now. All right, I'm coming in from the southwest. There we are. We're good. We're good. Yes, we're good. We're just, <laughs> just good. All right, guys, welcome back to the studio. And as you can see, this baby flies great. It was a lot of fun. You know, the five cameras on there was just an enormous amount of fun. And now this all started, Tom. Uh, it was your idea. You saw the B-17 and you just needed to do what you've now done to this thing. And what, where did that come from? What made you want to do it? Well, I've been flying FPV now for a couple of years. Obviously, my uh, hobby experience has been since I was a child. And um, the FPV experience has enthralled me again. I've taken airplanes that I have, you know, been bored with flying, thrown a camera in it and go back out, and that, that airplane breathes new life. Yeah. So everything I do uh, in recent times is, okay, flies nice as a model, let me see how it flies FPV, and, you know, the challenge is there again. Yeah. So, uh, um, 
I have been doing modeling since I've been RC aircraft since I was about 14. Uh, I did control line aircraft before that. Um, my passion for aircraft led me to work for uh, Grumman and then eventually north of Grumman. I've been working there since 1979. I have over 37 years of aerospace experience. I've been um, designing multi-million dollar wind tunnel models. I've done flight test articles. Um, I've helped with a lot of other projects um, um, in and out of the company uh, as industry assist on, on all aviation related products. So yeah. when I got the B-17 and did mm -hmm. your product review for it some time ago, um, I said, oh, this is going to be a great platform to just throw cameras at it and, <laughs> and, and, and literally be that guy that was in 1944 flying over Germany and trying to shoot down Major Schmitz and the pilot scared like shit sitting on his helmet. <laughs> sorry, scared like crap and sitting on his helmet. It's all right. <laughs> uh, you know, being afraid of the flak. And, um, you know, that, ex that, that experience that I could never appreciate, but had friends that were, were gunners in B-17s during the war, in B-24s, uh, mm -hmm. gentlemen that have passed now because they're, they're obviously get, getting quite old. Yeah. Um, but those stories that they told me, uh, uh, you know, over the years, uh, great uncles and uncles and friends of friends and stuff that related to me, that, that World War II experience and how terrifying it was. Um, not that there's any terror, you know, flying a model yeah, airplane, yeah, yeah. but just to be able to put yourself in and not, not watching a movie, not watching 12 o'clock high, not watching any of those other movies, but actually sitting inside the airplane and doing what you do to fly that airplane is, is the next greatest thrill to the hobby, which is uh, where I'm at now. Let's get into it. So your first step, you got the B-17, it was clean, it was new, and what was your first step into starting this project? Well, the, the only thing that I needed to do structurally to the airplane was um, change the arrangement of where some of the equipment was. Um, obviously, the upper ball, the upper turret here, um, I had to design because the one that was in there was static. It didn't move. So I needed to design a, a movable turret. I also had to uh, design a ball turret um, uh, to do the same thing. And, and after I got into it, I realized I could actually use the, the ball that came with the vehicle, but I had to do a new, a, new, <laughs> a new rotation because it didn't rotate, it only swung down. So yes. um, I have obviously thousands and thousands and thousands of our design, um, 3D design um, experience working for an aerospace company for so many years. So I just used the 3D design tools and then eventually 3D printing. And I printed myself a proper uh, Sperry turret in the top. And then I modified the ball turret that came with it so that it could also uh, pan and tilt by servo command. The rest of the airplane is basically stock. I did have to, because the servos, the elevator and rudder servos were where the ball turret was, I had to rearrange those servos. And I did put the rudder servo here in the vertical tail and two elevator servos in the horizontal tail just to get them out of the way and give, leave that all that real estate clear for the ball turret. Yeah. And, um, you know, obviously I had to have the drop in uh, upper turret. That area was already clear in the airplane, so there's no issue there. There's plenty of room. I mean, there's a plenty of room for anything. You could put five radios and 20 cameras in this airplane that's so immense. <laughs> and, I'm, and I'm sure it could carry all the extra weight. Um, and then the rest of it was, you know, cutting out the windows um, in the cockpit so I had a clear view, cutting out the window in the, in the bombardiers area so I had a reasonably clear view there, and then modifying the chin turret, which you see here, and with the Mobius inside. And it's still magnet. Right? Yeah, it's still magnet uh, attached. There it is. Okay, and you can see the Mobius there. Um, and uh, it snaps on, and I did, a, I did a couple of drop tests to make sure that that wasn't coming <laughs> off. <laughs> Um, knowing full well that I might have the great, might not have the greatest landings every once in a while, but that those there are three very heavy duty magnets uh, on there holding that on. So yeah, there's actually very little you actually have to do. To, even if you uh, were interested in just putting static cameras in it, even if you didn't want to change that, you could put a static camera up there, yeah. a static camera down here, not move anything. This airplane is cap fully capable of carrying the the little extra weight that you're putting in. Um, it's just a wiring job after that. I yeah, mean, you yeah. have to know something about, you know, the electronics and how you can get it to go. Um, and, of course, you need to put, buy some Hobby King video switchers so you can switch, use your transmitter to switch between the cameras if you're actually doing some of that stuff. So, yes, a very simple airplane to modify. And, as you can see, uh, it doesn't seem to suffer at all. I get uh, on five, 3S5000 with the stock motors and props, I set my timer for six minutes, and I still land with it at about 11.6 on the battery. Well, 
Tom, obviously, it's a pleasure talking to you guys. I hope you enjoyed this. We were so excited when you said you'd do it. It took some time because the man works too hard. <laughs> he can't do it 100% of the time. But every time we see something from you, it's always, you know, it's always top notch. The well, work is amazing. Um, there is, uh, you know, once we get through what we need to do with this model, I mean, there are some additional plans I have for this model. Um, for my own sake, only because, um, you know, I, the issue with an airplane this big and with all the um, the, the rat's nest of uh, wires that are in transporting. there, uh, transporting it. Now, I do have a van, um, but I built a special structure inside my van to be able to carry eight airplanes of reasonable size, but this is a little too big. So We're going to have to do that in a separate video. Yeah. We're going to have Tom um, show you how to rig out your van. Yeah. Um, <laughs> that's a nice little unit. Um, but yes, so what I plan on doing is, is so that I can use that rig inside there and still take the B-17 to the field, what I'm going to do um, later is I'm going to saw the wings off right out here at the aileron and make the outer wing panels plug in because I can get this in my van from here to here ah, in okay. one piece. I cannot nice. get it in one piece in my van without taking that, that support structure that's in there. So this will allow me to take the uh, airplane to the field, assembled with all my other airplanes, and I'll just have plug-in outer panels. All I have to do is connect an aileron uh, out there. So we'll do a little how-to video nice. for any of you guys that want to do that. Um, um, I'm, I've been pushing not only Durafly, but I do have at least some rapport with some of the other model manufacturers over the years, and I've been pushing them and pushing them and pushing them. If you're going to do multi-engines or twins or anything, make the wings plug in outside the last nacelle. I mean, it just makes the most sense so that everybody can keep all the electronics together. Yeah. All the connections, because every time you make that connection, you've got a chance for failure. So, yeah, granted, you usually find that failure on the ground if you do a, pr a proper pre-flight check. But the issue is you don't want to have to take the wing off again and find out what did I not miss not plugging in. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So it's nice to be able to set it up once in the bench at home, and then the only thing you have to do is like a couple of ailerons, like I said, a little couple of aileron connections when you plug the outer wing panel in, and you're done. And, and it makes it so much easier for even us Americans to have <laughs> large vehicles, but we like to take 20 airplanes to the field, not one. I thought everybody had an RV like us. <laughs> yeah. We just throw it in the RV and we're good to go. Right. So um, that's about the, the only other thing. Oh, there's some cosmetics. So now that I know that it flies well, um, there are, there's some hangar rash that we got actually when we were doing the uh, product profile. We had a little nicks and dings from some mid-airs from Alex and his quad. Yeah. <laughs> um, but uh, so some of that wants to be redone and I would like to kind of retouch it back up again. And, yeah. and, uh, but other than that, the, the airplane's sound. I like the way it is um, and it flies great. Uh, always has from the get-go. And like I said, uh, this airplane, even with everything I did to it, only gained, it gained less than a half a pound on as much as a swing. I never really weighed it. I, it's probably got to be a six or seven pound airplane. Half a pound, it didn't even notice it. Yeah. Didn't even notice yeah, it. Yeah, you could tell. Yeah. It just won. This thing always wants to fly, and people saw it at Neat Fair, uh, the regular version, and now I'm assuming we'll probably be bringing this to Neat I Fair. Would, yes, I would love to bring this to Neat Fair. Maybe get a lobster roll? Yeah, do a <laughs> lobster roll cut with this, you know, or, or, or have it shoot it shoot the, you know, the, the tow plane down with the guns. Oh, I'd yeah. love to see this thing flying over the mass warbird launch, because then we'd finally get that, what we couldn't do, a 50 pilots, yeah. 75 I think it was <laughs> right. last year. Have the B-17 flying high we with We should the just be gun super gun high. Yep. The gun turret pointed down, looking at all those airplanes flying below. It's going to be done. Yep. It's going to be done. Well, Tom, thank you so much guys if you want to see more about this you can always comment tom is all over our c groups he's all over some of our videos he'll answer questions about it and uh guys thank you so much until the next time we'll see you soon